Today's session is on the numerical modeling of an embankment performance related to a soil liquefaction and a comparison between finite difference method and the finite element method. Today's speaker is Dr. Feng Gang Ma from AMEC Foster Wheeler. Uh, we will get, uh, he will be the one speaking today. Again, at the end of the session, we will take about 10, 15 minutes to uh, take in any questions for Q&A. Uh, so in the chat box here, you can answer, you could ask any of your questions or leave any comments. Uh, so we will get started now. Uh, just to inform you guys, the session that you have registered register for is called a diamond series. It is a purely technical geotechnical engineering course, which has been approved by the NCSEA. So it's approved by all 50 states for your PDH credits. Uh, we will be focusing on presenting um, you know, topics related to the ge geostructural field um, and anything related to um, uh, any topics that you guys uh, actually uh, in the survey recommend. The session for the, the pe most of the people here is uh, they were invited and you were able to attend for free, but there are individuals uh, post who will be uh, having to pay for the session. So this is part one, which is free, and then part two will be a charge session for everyone else who is not present in the session today. Uh, following the, the session today, in order to uh, receive your PDH, you will need to have a minimum of 55 minutes of attendance time and there will be a short quiz at the end of the session. Uh, 10 questions, you will need to receive an 80% or higher uh, for the, the quiz in order to receive the credit. Um, I will discuss with this uh, afterwards again, and I will send you guys an email just to follow up regarding the sessions. So uh, the review questions, I will, uh, when you check your email later on uh, near the end of the session, you will see the questions there. You can submit the questions back into me, um, and we will be able to check it. And within seven days of today's session, we will be able to provide their certificates uh, for their credits. Today's speaker, again, is Dr. Feng Gang Ma. He is the Associate Geotechnical Engineer from AMEC Foster Wheeler. Uh, he has received his PhD from the University of Akron, and he has an extensive list of experience uh, from the field for geotechnical engineering, along with his topic today for liquefaction and seismic. So what I'm going to do is actually have Dr. Feng Gang Ma uh, present the material now. I want to thank him again. And if uh, if well, right now, as soon as he gets on this uh, gets on this mic, if we can do a quick sound check again to make sure there's no problems. Thank you. Okay, Dr. Ma, there's a, the presentation is uh, sent over to you. So if you can start, and if you could uh, just do a quick mic check to make sure everything is working, please. Okay. Dr. Ma, it's uh, uh, it's not the right screen. I don't think the, I think it's the wrong monitor. Uh, yes, I, I sorry. I, okay, here it goes. Uh, can can you see the screens now? Yes, yes, we can. Uh, it seems like the sound is okay. So we'll get started. Uh, the mic is all yours. Uh, yeah, this is uh, Feng Gang Ma. I, I work for AMAC Fast Whaler. Uh, uh, if you can hear me, uh, please raise your hand. Uh, uh, I do uh, numerical modeling uh, extensively. That's uh, my uh, daily work, actually. So I uh, uh, do uh, levees, dams, uh, such as like uh, T-walls in New Orleans and uh, uh, embankment, uh, liquefactions, and uh, yeah, uh, that's what I do uh, daily. Uh, 
today's uh, webinar is a uh, numerical modeling of uh, embankment per embankment performance uh, related to a uh, liquefaction and uh, I will do some comparisons between the finite difference method flag and uh, the finite element method uh, uh, matters GTS. Uh, when we do a dynamic uh, uh, analysis, like uh, of course there are these uh, traditional seismic stability procedures, uh, and also the the coupled more advanced effective stress approach. Uh, so, uh, as we, I mean, as a geotechnical or civil engineer, uh, I think most of us have done this uh, similar analysis uh, many many times, maybe. Uh, the traditional uh, seismic stability procedures. Uh, uh, usually, we start with uh, like a liquefaction uh, potential evaluation. Uh, we have uh, like a SPT, CPT, or shear wave velocity data. Uh, we will do like a, there are several and many different methods. Like a, most recently, and I think the most widely used is the uh, Idris Boulanger method. Uh, which will tell us uh, if uh, it, the, some, I mean, the soil, uh, we have data with uh, can or cannot liquefy. Uh, we can do a limit equilibrium stability analysis uh, to evaluate post earthquake stability. Uh, we can use like a residual strength for, for the liquefied layer, uh, such as that. And we can run a new mark type of uh, uh, analysis to estimate the total permanent deformation uh, too. The traditional method uh, provide us, I mean, mainly the potential of liquefaction to either occur or not occur, but uh, it really doesn't provide a lot of the details we, we would like to know. Uh, for example, the uh, progressive change of the soil state during earthquake shaking uh, or the potential of uh, the process of uh, power to pressure, uh, excess power to pressure build up, uh, uh, and when and if uh, the liquefaction will occur, and finally the the resulting permanent deformation uh, during and after earthquake. Not only just a one absolute value, but uh, uh, the range, the shape of of the project we are studying with. Uh, of course, the the coupled effective stress analysis. Uh, that's uh, what we are going to present uh, provide us the, those capabilities. Uh, again, it's, uh, we can actually model the progressive change of the soil state during earthquake shaking. Uh, we can, I mean, model the power to pressure buildup uh, and liquefaction. Uh, we can make a judgment based on power to pressure, power water pressure or a mean confining pressure uh, to see if uh, liquefaction actually occurred or not. Uh, of course, we will get the, the permanent deformation as a deformed shape of the whole model, not just uh, one number uh, like the Newmark method. Uh, that's a during and after earthquake. Uh, today's problem is a uh, is a ash pond uh, embankment. Uh, actually, uh, the traditional method and the advanced method they are not like uh, one has to take be better or, or you do this and without that actually they're they're going to enhance each other uh, for this problem we started with uh, the traditional i mean the liquefaction uh, judgment analysis and uh, we discovered a layer uh, it's about 15 to 30 feet below the ground uh, it's potential potential liquefiable as you can see it's the the orange uh, color uh, part of the embankment uh, and the Phreatic surface. Uh, then we run like a post earthquake uh, slope stability analysis. Uh, the factor of safety we got for for the whole thing at one scenario it is not large enough to meet uh, the requirement of the the regulatory agency. Uh, so there are two choices. I mean, you, you can either retrofit your project to increase the factor of safety or Maybe I mean there the conservatism embedded in the traditional method uh, is ten ten to over I mean like uh, too too much conservatism sometimes so that's 
uh, the owner and the, the people decided uh, we need to run a more advanced uh, couple of the effective stress analysis to get the true sort of the RU value, the power pressure, uh, uh, like a ratio for, for the interested region so we can do better uh, uh, like a stability analysis. Maybe we will get a, a better factor of safety. Of course, the, the advanced uh, uh, analysis will actually tell us uh, by itself, like uh, the deformed shape, if, if it's going to be stable or not. But uh, for this problem, uh, there is a very stringent uh, factor of safety. Uh, you have to be smaller than that. So uh, then that's why we are doing this to get uh, the uh, excess port pressure ratio and for, for the liquefied region. Uh, we have like a, a site specific data for, for, for this problem is uh, SPT and CPTs. So we plotted them all together and uh, just uh, want to uh, to make sure, I mean, uh, one, what uh, or which layer are, are they available, although they are identified in the prelim preliminary analysis already. But uh, when we got this problem, uh, we discovered not only the uh, the embankment fail uh, potentially potentially liquefiable, and also there is a layer uh, in the foundation soil. Uh, as you can see, the, the green is at the elevation for the embankment fail, and the, the blue line is uh, sub at the elevation for the uh, foundation uh, soil, uh, which was not identified in the prelim preliminary analysis. But uh, we we think uh, that should be added and uh, uh, analyzed too. Uh, this is the, the model uh, developed for using flag. Uh, as you can see, there are two potentially liquefiable layer. One is the, the dark dark green of the foundation uh, embankment field, and the the purple is the new addition of uh, the the foundation soil. Uh, when we when we did these uh, advanced analysis, uh, they are more like a geological data. So the slope of the uh, weathered basalt, uh, um, uh, weathered rock was actually uh, become uh, less uh, slopey uh, or, or too too steep uh, uh, during the slope stability analysis. So that's two changes we we made. Uh, there are standard standard step. I mean, if you you do, I mean, no, no matter like a finite element, finite difference analysis uh, for. Uh, the couple of the effective analysis. We start with uh, evaluating the initial uh, static stress state. Uh, then you have to uh, establish the phreatic surface through the embankment. Uh, you switch the nonlinear uh, soil model, uh, which can capture uh, excess fault pressure to the liquefiable layers. And then, I mean, you have to have the earthquake loading, uh, which can be obtained like based on like a code or a set specific uh, like hazard analysis. Of course, we, we will run the do the dynamic runs and uh, process the result uh, to see what we got. Uh, this seminar we will focus on just the liquefaction part of the of the processes, uh, not the uh, phreatic surface uh, establishment or the static uh, uh, initial stress. Uh, uh, establishment. Uh, as we all know, liquefaction occurs when effective uh, stress becomes or become or close to zero during generation of uh, due to generation of uh, excess port pressure. Uh, for several geotechnical engineers, when, when we talk uh, liquefaction, we mainly talk about like a saturated cohesionless soil and short-term loading, such as earthquake when there is no time for the uh, excess port pressure generated to dissipate. Uh, also, uh, this is just uh, some quick reviews, like uh, when soil liquefies, uh, it softens, it, loss, it loses uh, shear strength, so uh, potentially large deformation could occur. Like uh, when this occurs to embankment of uh, impoundment, uh, large deformation occur, could occur, so uh, due to uh, liquefaction, the dam could fail or lose its functionality. Uh, it's the very famous, like uh, Lower San Fernando, uh, was uh, an example. Uh, but of course, the the 
there there's so much research done to to that problem and uh, a lot of a uh, numerical or other method was was used to uh, to 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 do that type of uh, study uh, for structures when liquefaction occurs in foundation soils it, it may uh, lose uh, bearing capacity the structure can like uh, have uh, excess deformation or differential settlement which can cause like a uh, cracking to the walls or, or whatever damage uh, uh, the, the, the structure will lose its functionality or worse it, it, it actually fail or something. Uh, the key for modeling liquefaction numerically uh, the, the, the number one the single most important task in, in liquefaction uh, analysis is uh, to capture the excess port pressure uh, generated reasonably reasonably accurate by uh, whatever uh, constitutive soil model we choose. Uh, just to uh, to help us on that subject, uh, I mean, a lot of effort, great effort has been spent by academia and uh, engineers. Uh, there are actually uh, uh, many available models, such as the UBC sand, uh, the URS model, the PM4 sand. That's uh, UC Davis professor, uh, Russ Bollinger is uh, uh, modified uh, model uh, which is available the 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 DLL, the executable is available i mean if you run flag you can use that model and uh, uh, lastly the the one uh, critical state model that's a model we use in amac fast failure for many years uh, which uh, which is is uh, based on bonding surface plasticity series uh, the first two models are actually modified from the famous Morocco model, uh, and the last two uh, again is based on bonding surface plasticity theory, uh, specifically for for soil or for for sand. Uh, the UBC sand is the the first and the only one available for Midas now, uh, which has been uh, implemented, of course, by Midas uh, into a GTS uh, for us to use. Uh, now I'm going to uh, touch on some like the, the, the models, uh, the UBC sand versus uh, the Wang model. Uh, some just start to start with some general soil behaviors. Uh, like uh, as you can see on the right hand side, that's I mean the shear stress shear strain curve for a molecular model uh, is a bilinear. Uh, you is linear elastic before yielding and then uh, perfectly plastic uh, after yielding, uh, but uh, as we all know, I mean, soils doesn't behave like that at all. Uh, you can see a simplification of soil behavior. The nonlinear starts with, I mean, immediately uh, under any loading almost. So it's a uh, it's nonlinear from beginning, and the uh, the the curve, the red lines uh, shows uh, the the typical uh, just simple shear stress shear strain uh, relationship uh, for soil uh, this is just uh, the, the the same idea but under uh, like a cyclic loading with a very varied amplitude a cyclic loading uh, you can see uh, uh, if if the, the amplitude is large enough you can see the molecular model is straight line up go flat and straight line back down and the the, the soil it tend to uh, behave like a uh, like nonlinear uh, loading and loading, loading and load, and loading. So uh, this is a, a very good uh, like uh, ratio. You, you can I mean see how wh why I mean just use more coolant in most cases for soil. So for soil is is actually not okay. Uh, for the UBC sand uh, implemented in uh, Midas, uh, of course, it, which is uh, a modification of more coolant. Uh, just some, uh, I mean, quick points like uh, to uh, to 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 change the the just the vertical, the elastic uh, loading, the straight line as I, I just showed you, a uh, uh, hyperbolic type of uh, uh, elastic uh, uh, backbone curve uh, was uh, used here. Uh, you can see the equation that the G is, is the elastic shear modulus, which varies with uh, pressure actually uh, P. And also for the plastic share and the compression, uh, because the molecular is a perfectly plastic, it's it's yield, and and doesn't 
uh, like uh, harden or, or anything that that's not what soil behaves. Uh, that's why this uh, modification was was done. Uh, but the one thing you, uh, UBC Sand did not do is to change the uh, unloading uh, el elastically, so which is still like that now. Well, we will see more of what it does uh, later. These are the the typical uh, the model parameters of UBC Sand. Uh, you have the the parameters for elastic uh, behavior, uh, like the KGE, the NE, and then you have the model parameter for plastic. Uh, one thing I want to say is a lot of work has been done by the model developer, like Professor uh, Peter Ben and uh, the caretaker uh, Mike Beatty, uh, to relate the model parameter to uh, to the NM60 uh, blow count value. Uh, uh, because a blow count uh, N160 is, I think, most prevalent uh, parameter for us uh, engineers for almost every project. So with this type of uh, a relationship, uh, which will, will, I mean, make the model parameter calibration much easier. Uh, for the for whatever model to be usable, there are certain type of uh, verification, like calibration has to be done, like in element level, uh, if you look at the, the diagram on the the left side, the the uh, which lists the type of uh, lab test, the direct simple shear, uh, uh, drained and drained, and uh, certainly like a track show or, or even direct simple shear, like a cyclic loading test, you can compare those to uh, to verify your model, which is capable of uh, uh, representing soil. And then there are model validations, like after you pass that stage, uh, you can compare your model with a centrifuge test of a really real uh, recorded uh, problems such as uh, Lorsen and Fernando Dam. Uh, this is the, the same equations which relates the, the model parameters to the M60 values. Uh, this uh, page summarizes uh, the comparisons. Uh, the top two figures are the general like a monotonic loading direct simple share. Uh, as you can see, the uh, UBC sand prediction uh, reflects, I mean, generally well of the, the, the lab test. The lower two figures are <clears throat> like a sec under ses seismic cyclic loading. Uh, one point I was trying to tell you, uh, if you look at the, the loading, unloading, reloading, the unloading for UBC sand is also always vertical, a uh, straight line. Th that's the part uh, which is really not true for soil. If you look at the the, the test data on the left left side of the the figure, it, you can see. I mean, even during unloading, power pressure actually accumulate. Uh, that, that's why we uh, have more complicated, uh, more complex, uh, not complex, more advanced. Uh, model or uh, are developed or are still being I mean to uh, to be developed or, or new series or whatever. But this model is what we're talking about. Talking about is is the bonding surface plus plus C, plasticity model. Sorry, uh, this is the one model uh, which originated from uh, UC Davis uh, and their, like uh, Dr. Julian Wang and the Professor uh, Davalias. Uh, the the PM4 sand is is just similar is from a, a similar branch of of the the model. Uh, this this model is just trying to resolve all those issues the nonlinear nonlinearity from uh, beginning and during loading uh, during and loading too. Uh, for uh, I just want to uh, show some simplified like a plasticity model concept. Uh, when, when we talk about the plasticity theory, I mean, usually we have to deal with like an increment, not like a algebraic function. That, that's what uh, UBC Sand was trying to do. If you look at the, the total uh, strain here, the D gamma, which of course equals to the elastic part and the plastic part, uh, for the elastic part is the, I mean, an incremental shear stress divided by the uh, elastic shear modulus. For the plastic bar is the the same incremental stress divided by the plastic uh, shear modulus. Uh, the, the reason I'm showing you this is, I mean, in principle, these are there's very simple concept. Uh, how the plastic 
uh, uh, share modulus uh, is determined, it has to meet actually just two simple criteria. And then of course you can, I mean, do whatever you want uh, to, 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 to develop certain type of uh, equation to, to do this, the same thing. Uh, the, the two key points I want to show you is like one share stress equals zero, uh, the, the, sh the plastic share modulus must be inf infinite. Uh, because there is at that time there is no sh plastic uh, uh, potential for for string. So as you see this equation, you have a shared stress at the uh, denominator. Of course, when it's zero, this is infinite. And when it's equals to the failure or failure, um, the maxima share stress, the sh share modules become zero. So the the string can be infinite. So these are the two simple criteria used to develop the uh, plastic share modulus. Uh, I think there are some stories I just want to uh, quick mention, like a uh, professor Dafalias, uh, of course, started with this concept. And uh, at that time, he didn't even know the shape of the H. After, I mean, following these two simple concepts, he, when he saw the final, I mean, equation, it's just, I mean, very surprised when he plotted out and saw the curve first. It's so beautiful. and. Uh, and uh, so all those, as you can see, this is what I'm talking about is the thick dotted line in the middle. Uh, with one parameter, you can actually change the shape moving up and down. But for for UBC then type of, uh, you use a algebraic function, that shape is determined. There's not really much you can do. Uh, this is, I'm show, going to show you like a element level, how, how well this, uh, I mean, model performs. You can see the this is a very complex uh, track show uh, cyclic loading. The model per prediction is almost pretty. I mean, close to the identical to the test result uh, on both uh, on both side. And uh, uh, just fortunately, recently we got even more good data from uh, UC Berkeley, a uh, professor uh, Ray Racy and uh, his student, Jerry Wu. Uh, this, this actually was done in 2003, but we got it recently. So we uh, updated our uh, one model. And uh, this is the the prediction of the direct simple share sex loading result. As you can see, the, the red lines, the model prediction, the, the blue dotted lines, the test data, they looks quite similar and, uh, and uh, very beautiful, uh, if you ask me. Uh, I'm trying to turn the page. Just uh, be patient with me. Yeah, it, because the the plot uh, uh, have more data. Maybe is sometimes take a little time. Uh, this is a a different. Is uh, the 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 figure you saw before is for sort of a loose end. This is for dense end. Uh, it's I mean there. I mean the lab test the test result and the model prediction are, are really similar. And uh, for those things, we're using just a uh, calibrated simple group of uh, model parameters. Uh, for more advanced the model doesn't mean, I mean, you have to have uh, so many more complicated like uh, model parameters you have to calibrate. I, I, as an engineer, I mean, that's the part we really don't like. If we have to use a very complicated model, we have to do so many calibrations. I mean, it, it becomes impossible sometimes. But as you can see for these, we have 10 model parameters. Uh, but uh, there are like the elastic model parameters, which are, uh, I mean, you have to have it. It doesn't matter how simple or how complex you use. Even for more cooler model, you have to have the metal modulus, the Poisson ratio and stuff. But here you can see we have the uh, the friction angle, the relative density uh, that's related to the initial volume ratio. And the G sub zero is, is the parameter which defines the, the nonlinear elastic uh, uh, shear modulus. And the, the, the parameter HR actually is the one which controls the uh, shear modulus reduction curve, the shape. Uh, if we do like a, like a shake type of analysis, we know we have to have that G of G max curve. Uh, but here, yeah, we can use the same curve for your chosen soil and verify vary this one parameter to to get a, a sort of a very good match uh, to what 
uh, e, the, the, the curve you've chosen. And the, the case of R and the D are the two parameters which controls how fast the power to pressure generation. Uh, of course, Poisson ratio, that's uh, elastic. And then the gamma and eta are, are two additional parameters which controls post-liquefaction uh, a, a string accumulation. Uh, most of the time we don't have like a lab or whatever data available. So that's why we have two sort of uh, uh, calibrated like uh, just data to use when we, we don't have information. Uh, this this ratio RP over IF, uh, which defines like uh, the dilation when dilate can occur. Uh, th this is just to show you like the, the modulus reduction curve. Uh, the red is model prediction. The middle, the blue one is the uh, C D is the 1970 uh, med medium sand curve. Uh, by verifying the H hard, uh, we can I mean match whatever uh, curve you choose uh, almost. <clears throat> yeah, it, it just bear with me. It, okay. Uh, this is similar, I mean, direct simple share dynamic analysis, uh, seismic uh, stress. Uh, I just want to show you like a post liquefaction, what we're talking about. Uh, if you look at the left hand side, the curve, the one, uh, it liquefies the stress, I mean, pass is like a duplicating, duplicating itself, but the string curve, a uh, string, a uh, share string, share stress curve, you look at the right hand side, uh, the strings keep on uh, accumulating. This is the so-called post liquefaction uh, uh, string accumulation, uh, which may be uh, important if we do a, a, a truly liquefied type of analysis of embankment and things. Uh, this is the uh, accumulation uh, summary of, of the capability of the model for the K-alpha effect. Uh, K-alpha is like a, if you have pre-existing share stress. This is under like, a, a, the same uh, cyclic stress ratio, but uh, with uh, pre-existing share stress uh, zero, that's the top figure, uh, 0.1, uh, the middle figure, and the 0.2 in the uh, the bottom figure. Uh, you can see the, the, the model behave sort of uh, very differently, uh, although almost all the situation that's same, the only difference is uh, you have, uh, you know, how much uh, pre-existing share stress you have. Uh, that's uh, the just some summary of the models, uh, uh, two of the typical ones. Uh, now I'm going to show you some like uh, the, the, the functions, the, the options of a GTS and X, uh, the, the built-in like uh, capabilities which helps us to, uh, to do uh, this type of uh, uh, effective coupled analysis. Uh, of course, when we do uh, dynamic analysis, the boundary condition are, are very important, like the, the left, left, right, the vertical boundary, uh, be, because we cannot model like an infinite boundary. So we have to uh, be able to capture, uh, to use certain type of boundary uh, to mimic the, uh, the infinite uh, distance on left and right, uh, just to, uh, to limit uh, eliminate like the reflective uh, wave when it hit the boundary. So here, uh, Ben has provided you with the free field uh, uh, to do that. Uh, there are a couple of choices. Uh, it's like a infinite boundary or ob ob absorbent boundary, which deals with sort of uh, uh, two different situations. And the the damper for, for bottom, like, uh, uh, it's either like fixed or, or you have to input damper uh, uh, properties uh, to mimic the, the bottom boundary. The, the fixed boundary for, for our engineer is really rarely used because uh, uh, in, in situ, uh, we, we really don't have that type of uh, uh, situation often like a very soft stuff uh, set on a hard rock, uh, you're modeling the, the interface. So most of the time we use uh, damper. Uh, for the damper, you can input the the, the property of it, the sys of P and sys of S. Uh, uh, th this diagram shows you how to do this. Uh, I'm going to uh, I'm not going to get into the details. Uh, th this is the figure showing you the the principle of a free field and uh, how you get to uh, to choose an 
and uh, use free field boundary for the left and right uh, vertical boundary. Uh, actually, this is uh, a video to show you how this is done in, in Metis. Uh, when you build up your model, uh, you set up properties, uh, you choose other. Uh, for the damper, you choose like ground surface uh, springs. Uh, then you have to like select where, where it, this is the bottom, of course. Then you give a name. Uh, yeah, you choose the, the region. It will set up the the spring automatically for you. And next, it's going to show the the free field. Yeah, uh, property. Yeah, you choose the free field. Then uh, left and right, you you choose the the vertical, the the, the list of nodes, uh, like uh, easily. And then this is set up. So you can you can look at this uh, later, and if you, you're doing this, and uh, I have problems. Also, uh, the load dynamic load. You can load in whatever acceleration time history uh, for your problems. Uh, this is for our problem. This is uh, uh, acceleration normalized, like uh, the unit is uh, in G. This is the actual uh, acceleration we used for uh, these example problems. Uh, when you do this, you have to set up like a how long uh, the duration uh, for this one is 30 seconds and the, the time in increment uh, you want like a how, how small it is. And this is the screen and how you're going, you are able to, uh, to set up of this. Uh, then you have to uh, uh, use some controls like uh, for uh, undrained, like a liquefaction related analysis. Uh, uh, of course, it's undrained. Uh, you have to ch you choose, I mean, the undrained condition. So the port pressure, uh, excess port pressure uh, generation can be uh, correctly uh, uh, implemented. Uh, there also like uh, in the analysis control uh, pane, you need to, uh, to select allow uh, undrained material behavior. Uh, this can be done for for any construction stage. Uh, when we are talking about like liquefaction, uh, of course there are potential of large deformation. Then the 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 geometry they they call them geometry linear nonlinearity, and uh, uh, Midas have this very nice function. Uh, you choose in analysis control. Uh, you you have to select uh, uh, consider. A geometric uh, nonlinear effect, uh, as this diagram showing you, and then uh, for the port pressure uh, or load effect, since the 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 mesh is going to uh, deform, uh, I mean, under large deformation, so uh, the de direction of the load could change uh, and things. So this can be this is updated automatically in in Midas GTS. Uh, uh, this this is for you to set up uh, like, like uh, the this uh, convergency criteria actually uh, in in default the the convergency criteria is set up at the hybrid but uh, when we do a, a large deformation uh, we need to choose the third one the standard uh, for stability uh, so your analysis can be complete with within like a, a reasonable time frame. Uh, otherwise, if the convergency uh, criteria is too stringent, uh, is, it may take very long for your program to converge. Uh, this sh this shows you the post processing. Uh, how you uh, after analysis, uh, you can actually uh, query and get like uh, whatever information, like relative uh, displacement, the uh, excess fault pressure, uh, stress uh, state. This is showing you how to uh, uh, choose and get these. In analysis, uh, you use the history option function, and then you switch to the result to click on uh, history and graph. So whatever you choose will be, is here, so you can just click on it and uh, uh, click the button draw it, which shows you the 
the results you're looking at. This, 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 these are actual results of, of this problem. Uh, this is very handy, and and then you can export it to Excel uh, for your report and uh, and things. Uh, now we we uh, reach the stage where we're talking about the case uh, uh, of this problem. Of course, I, I already showed you the uh, some briefly the the shape of of the problem and stuff. Uh, this is the mesh model of flag mesh model. Uh, if, if you have done like a flag, uh, you know, I mean, mesh generation sometimes are not that direct and simple, uh, especially like uh, if you have a lot of different regions and uh, uh, if the uh, liquefiable layer uh, is not very thick, uh, uh, such as this, uh, I mean, uh, you the, the process of uh, creating a very nice, I mean, even uh zones for in those regions sometimes and takes a lot of time you, you you have to know what you're you're doing you have to uh, modify revise uh, just to make that work if you have like a very odd shape of uh, zones uh it, it tend to cause you a problem down the road it it becomes like they call them bad geometry uh, uh for the, the constitutive model used for this analysis uh since we have more choices uh, now uh, in flag, uh, the built-in thin model, the 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 the, the on-call, the so-called you can call in model like UBC sand, one model, PM four sand, uh, uh, or whatever you have, uh, uh, you you can actually uh, call it. So for this one, of course, we use uh, our own uh, one model uh, for the problem. These are the actual uh, parameter we. We had uh, for the problems, uh, the the main calibration we had to do is mainly the 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 KR and the D, which controls how fast the, the port pressure generation uh, uh, are uh, the, yeah the, the the speed of port port pressure generation, like the and then the HR which uh, we used the uh, the C degrees uh, median sand so that's the model parameter we calibrated of course you have you 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 you, you most of the time you know the friction angle uh, the initial void ratio uh, the post uh, liquefaction uh, uh, gamma and eta we just use the standard value the input earthquake uh, this is the record. Uh, uh, some uh, facts about this. This for this problem, uh, uh, set specific hazard analysis is done. Uh, we choose like three set of uh, earthquake, earthquake records with two horizontal uh, or perpendicular uh, like uh, motions uh, to represent different uh, like uh, hazard sources. Uh, this is the shortest one. Uh, we, we just use this as example for for this problem. The PGA is only 0.055 G, and uh, you can see the the stronger motion. I mean, starts maybe from 2.5 seconds and ended at about seven seven and a half seconds. Uh, this is the record recorded uh, dam crest uh, deformation, uh, both vertical and horizontal. The blue line on the left hand side is the. Uh, vertical uh, settlement of the dam crest as you can see i mean accumulation of the uh, settlement stopped at about 10 seconds from seven, seven which is i mean related or correspondent to to the loading but the uh, horizontal uh, like a uh, movement uh, it it, it it didn't actually stop and gradually move a little uh, but uh, if you look at the absolute value this is really i mean very small deformation sediment is 0.16 uh, inches and the, the 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 horizontal movement is only about 0.1 inches uh this is the time history of the mean confining pressure uh, we we recorded this just to want to see uh what i mean port pressure generation is doing uh the left hand side is a zoom uh in the downstream toe near the downstream toe the right hand side, the red line is uh, is somewhere near the the embankment field, the center. 
uh, as you can see, the the mean confining pressure reduced uh, about 75 to 100 psf, uh, but uh, it is way I mean far from uh, a zero or, or not even close to a, to leak liquefaction. This is the recorded like a uh, uh, dam quest acceleration. Uh, if you remember the the input, uh, I mean, uh, of course, <laughs> we just talk about the input motion is only about 0.55 g, 0.055 g. The recorded uh, uh, acceleration at dam quest is about doubled, so the amplification uh, factor is about two. Uh, uh, th this is the, the same analysis, but done with the GTS model or just a uh, full, we can see the difference and uh, what it looks like in uh, GTS. Uh, the, the two point I'm talking about actually is marked here. The, this uh, is downstream toe. This is the uh, almost center of the embankment field. That's where we recorded the uh, port pressure and the uh, mean confining pressure uh, time history uh, uh okay let me switch back one thing i want to to talk about is uh like a mesh generation in matters gts actually uh since we have the flag uh, uh, data already we just uh, uh print out or output it the the boundary the 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 x y's of the different layers and i mean the control points uh, this can be this is used directly to generate this model uh, which is can be easily done uh, and the, the other very nice feature is like uh, if you look at the the liquefiable layer of the embankment field and the uh, the the uh, foundation soil as you can see here you you have much more a uniform like a zoom shape it's almost squares uh, when we do liquefaction, that's something we really want to do. If, if in the, for example, the uh, embankment field, you only have uh, two layers, that's usually not good. You you need at least three layers because uh, the material difference uh, on top and below are not usually just more coolant or some other like soil models. And then the property of the 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 interface layer will be impacted. And if you only like two layers, the result in the liquefiable layer potentially is really not representative. But here, it, this can be easily done in Metas GTS. You can see there are almost four layers and uh, almost, I mean, all like a uh, square shaped. This uh, function of a GTS Metas is a huge benefit uh, if you use these, I mean, to uh, to when you generate the the, the mesh. Uh, these are the model parameters and the material properties. Uh, the elastic, the Young's, mod, Young's modulus, the Poisson ratio, and then the the, the density. Of course, that's a material property, not a model pro property. And the, the initial K naught value, which was used, uh, and then uh, the plastic model parameters, which are sort of uh, calibrated mainly based on the M160 uh, blow count as we have talked before. Uh, these are the same recorded, uh, like a dam crest deformation. Uh, the left-hand side is the sediment vertical. Uh, the right-hand side, red one, are the, the horizontal or movement. Uh, as, as you can see, I mean, the, the result looks, I mean, the magnitude of the permanent deformation are very similar to flag. Of course, <laughs> for this problem, uh, the absolute value are, are small as the input motion is so small. Uh, but uh, the another thing there look different is like uh, there are much more bigger swings uh, in the GTS model. Uh, my guess is this are mainly uh, because of we are using two different constitutive model. Uh, UBC sand was uh, uh, one bonding surface plasticity model. Uh, these are the mean confining pressure uh, or time history recorded. Uh, the port pressure generation at these two locations, uh, the left hand side at downstream toe and the right hand side uh, middle of the uh, embankment field, they are reduced some, but of course, just like the flat result is far from a liquefaction. 
actually the uh, the absolute value here I, I think this is about half of what uh, a flag recorded I mean just the, the not if you don't look at the uh, the swing from po uh, low to high just look at the trend line uh, these are the the same location but uh, the uh, port pressure recording uh, of course uh, you have port pressure generation that's why your mean confining pressure uh, is reducing during earthquake uh, the same uh, uh, acceleration recorded at dam crest uh, the two result i mean the gts uh, ns and the flag are uh, very similar i mean the amplification factor is both about two and uh, yeah, there are very similar result. Uh, the, the another benefit of uh, using uh, GTS and X is uh, uh, the uh, actually you can I mean sort of uh, uh, see it very uh, clearly the liquefiable area uh, as you can see uh, in this slide. Uh, this is uh, if you look at the the there is a built-in function. Uh, it's called normalized max max stress ratio. And uh, there is a power pressure ratio too. These two are uh, similar. And uh, this uh, video is showing you, uh, if you look at carefully, I mean, now it start from beginning, the color of the, of the liquefied zone is changing. Uh, and then now it's stabilized. If you recall the earthquake uh, motion stopped at about seven and a half seconds. Of course, uh, nothing happens for the port pressure tool. That's why the color uh, stopped. This is pretty handy for you, uh, like to uh, to to look visually what happened to the liquefied zone you are interested uh, in. Uh, now we we come to very close to to the end. Like uh, about, I mean, this is what we have learned by. Uh, uh, doing this two uh, analysis, uh, both flag and uh, uh, GTS and S. Uh, number one is uh, the dam embankment experienced a uh, some like a shake, but uh, with very limited permanent deformation. Uh, number two, some uh, excess power pressure was generated in the liquefiable foundation and embankment layers, but uh, not enough, or not even close to cause liquefaction. Uh, the the horizontal acceleration and dam crest was amplified about two times uh, for this case, and the, the excess port pressure generation actually stopped uh, after uh, first 15 seconds. But if if you look uh, uh, in the details, I mean, after eight, 10 seconds, it, it varies very little uh, already. Uh, there are some conclusions by doing this uh, analysis and uh, and the comparison. Uh, I, I think we we want to ask ourselves why we we, we are doing this advanced method. I mean, if we have uh, we are very familiar with and we have this simplified method there, and we we know how to do it. Uh, but I, I can use this uh, uh, problem as an example, I, and uh, because uh, for this problem we did this. But uh, like I, I, I said at the beginning, I mean, the factor of safety is less than the regulatory requirement. What, what you do, uh, you can either, I mean, actually do some retrofit to, to the embankment to, 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 to add the soil or battery thing to, to make, uh, I mean, the, the slope a little bit less. But uh, if, if that's really necessary, that's why we run this advanced method. After we run it, we got the, the two liquefied layer, the, the RU value, like uh, exactly, and then we use this value and take it back to the uh, uh, slope stability analysis. And of course, after now you know it's, there's no liquefaction, so uh, you can modify the analysis uh, to more, more reasonably and then rerun your slope stability. Uh, and then the factor of safety, of course, is, is, is meet the requirement. Uh, this, I mean, if you call, if you consider, I mean, spending, this can be like cost effective. I mean, if you do any extra work, I mean, the cost potentially can be pretty high uh, with uh, the numerical analysis. Uh, also, uh, the, we want to, to know at 
this day and age, we have faster computers, we have com uh, good constitutive models, we have the tools to do this. I mean, not like uh, 20 years ago, I mean, we have to do this simplified method because it, it just takes so long to run this analysis. Uh, for example, for the flag of these 30 second analysis on my machines only takes about uh, like uh, three to four hours at most. And, and also uh, now uh, we are just trying to see, do, I, do we have to use finite, uh, finite difference method such as flag or we can do like a finite element analysis. This example shows us, I mean, uh, for certain uh, problems, I mean, finite element problem like a uh, Meta GTS uh, works just as fine. Uh, but uh, we will do more uh, down the road uh, to test the limit, like uh, maybe there are limitations uh, for either method or for finality method if uh, how large the deformation can be. So we can actually, I mean, use this method. But uh, uh, this is the end of the presentation. And thank you very much. I appreciate uh, your uh, listening of uh, this uh, webinar. All right, I want to thank Dr. Ma uh, for this session. Uh, in your email, you should be receiving the questions for the, the session. Um, you could uh, return them back to the email uh, that's going to be listed at the end of the slide. Uh, for the most part, um, I want to thank you guys for participating in the session. Uh, what we're going to be focusing on right now for the last uh, five minutes is trying to get an idea uh, a little bit more about uh, the, I guess, the thought process of Dr. Ma's project and his presentation. So we'll take uh, the next like 10, 15 minutes to do a Q&A. Um, again, in the chat box over here, you could ask the questions. I will type uh, a message here so you guys can see it. Okay. All right, I just sent it all out to you guys. Um, in terms of a couple of people are asking if they could uh, get the presentation material by email as well. Uh, we, yes, we will definitely share the material that we have covered, Dr. Ma has covered today uh, via email. So what you can expect from the email is, uh, number one, the list of questions along with the short survey. And number two, it will be uh, the presentation material that you have seen today. In terms of the questions, uh, Dr. Ma, the first one is um, the model will be uh, uh, responsible in the website. I'm uh, not sure. Sorry, I'm not. Uh, I think there was a typo there, but uh, the other question is: Is this model, the Wang model, developed in GTS NX? Uh, the the Wang model. Uh, not not yet, uh, but uh, it's. Uh, I think we're in the very early stage uh, to work with uh, Metas. Maybe if if they help, <laughs> we we can uh, incorporate it into the uh, GTS. But uh, at this time, no. Okay, yeah. that's something we will answer for uh, that individual a little bit more in detail at a later time. Uh, the next question is: Hello, thanks for the presentation. Uh, my question is, have you considered cases with larger deformations yet? For instance, have you run the same analysis with larger amp uh, amplitude ground motions? Uh, I, actually, we tried this. Uh, we actually uh, increased the, the ground motion time, time times to a 0.5G. Uh, uh, but we we didn't have time to do a, like a detailed comparison uh, uh, and things, and of course for this problem, <laughs> uh, the 0.055G is is actually the design earthquake for for that region. Uh, for so for 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 but for the comparison purposes, so I think we started with uh, uh, increasing the the uh, ampli amplification to uh, by ten times, and uh, uh, GTS I think got result, but uh, uh, Flag can do this analysis, of course, but uh, we didn't really do uh, detailed comparisons and things. Uh, did that answer your question? Uh, you could respond back uh, in the chat box. 
Uh, in the meantime, I'll move on to the next question. Uh, what is the minimum N160 which can be used for the UBC SAN model? Uh, I don't think there's a minimum per se, and uh, of course, uh, if, if the M160 is very small, like uh, below five, that that's a very soft, bad material. Uh, when you do it, it's, it, it's probably going to give you a very large deformation. So uh, I think there's no limit on on the M160. It's just how I mean your model will respond when you actually run it. Uh, if you're going to uh, uh, meet, you encounter like uh, numerical problems, uh, uh, that I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, but uh, uh, in flag, I mean, if you run it, uh, if 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 it's a flow failure, I mean, after 10, 15 feet, I mean, it's going to stop. You can re regenerate the mesh, but sometimes you don't have to. You know, it's failed. So um, I don't know if that answers all your questions, but that's. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the next question is, uh, how can we have this model? Is it possible to have the DLL file to apply in FLAC? Uh, oh, you're talking about the DLL model. Uh, if you want to use it, uh, I, you can email me. I, I can send you the DLL. Uh, whoever wants to use it, it's welcome to use it. But uh, this is also, I mean, you mean this? Uh, uh, I, I'm sorry. I think you're talking about for flag, right? Because for GTS, I don't think you have the error option yet. Uh, yeah, this is also at the flag website uh, for their user-defined model. But uh, we have update internally and has has not posted the updated version yet. So you can contact me to to get the error if you're interested. Okay. All right. Um, Another question was asking, how long did the model uh, take in GTSNX to run? Uh, the GTS, uh, I think uh, for this problem, it takes a little bit longer than, than my flag. Uh, uh, I think uh, Midas uh, also ran it in, in their machine. My machine may not be the fastest. I think it's about uh, five, six hours. Uh, that's what I think. Okay. Uh, the next question is, thank you for the presentation. Can you please provide a full reference to the relationships between the N60 and the model parameters you have used in the MIDAS analysis? Uh, oh, th this relationship actually is generated by uh, Mike Beatty, who is the caretaker of the UBC SAND. There are several papers uh, available on this too. Uh, yeah, I, I think if you send me an email, I can I can try to find the the paper and uh, and uh, send you a copy of those. And uh, yeah, uh, th this is sort of experience based and uh, based on past uh, job site uh, project analysis and uh, and things. And uh, of course, when you get this relationship, you really have to uh, look in details of your own stuff and uh, and verify it. Uh, element level uh, even if you get this relationship i think you won't verify because uh uh yeah you, 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 I, I don't think there is a, just one equation and then you should just use it and uh, in real project uh, situation mm. okay thank you uh and uh for the people who really want uh have more questions and want to get more material like that when like in reference to those questions um I will provide my email at the end of the session today. So you could email me uh, the more detailed questions and more requests that you guys have, and I will forward it over to Dr. Ma so he could answer it and uh, send it back to you. Or if he sends it back to me, I'll forward it back over to you. Uh, we'll take a couple more questions, Dr. Ma, and then uh, I guess we'll move on to the next portion, okay? Okay. All right. Um, there's a... F a decent amount, so bear with me. Uh, this is a follow-up to a question you answered earlier. Uh, is there a plan to publish or make the comparison results available for the larger amplitude analysis in the future? 
that's uh, I think it will depend on uh, Midas uh, and the GTS and my, myself, like uh, engineers, if we have time. And uh, uh, of course, uh, if there's something interested uh, to Midas engineer, uh, uh, yeah, we can do that. But at this time, we don't have uh, like a, a plan to do this yet. Okay. Okay. Um, the next question is uh, a two-part question. Uh, are you using Wang model in your FLAC and UBC SAND and MIDAS? If so, how can you compare them? Uh, I, I should clarify from the beginning, this is really not a, just academic uh, comparison because uh, 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 for, for, for MIDAS, uh, of course, we at currently we only have UBC SAND, we cannot do anything else. And, uh, uh, that, that's what we used. But for 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 flag, like I said, we have so many choices, and uh, uh, oh, one model is, is just the model we use daily and uh, everything, and we 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 don't use UBC sand. Of course, if I want, I can run UBC sand, but uh, uh, I didn't have time to uh, to to do that, and uh, I I don't think uh, we're really doing uh, like uh, the magnitude of deformation type of a comparison. We just try to compare to offer, I mean, some uh, uh, options for you. If 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 you're, you're really, I mean, you're not up to flex. I mean, I know flex sometimes very demanding, I mean, to generate a mesh and a lot of things, but uh, uh, to use the the flexibility of mesh generation, the many other functions, Meta GTS, uh, that's, we, we just want to show, I mean, you can do this, but I'm not saying we are, Going to, Midas GTS uh, are going to do all those uh, uh, liquefaction related analysis yet. We we're going to uh, to do more internally too, to 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 test the, the type of limits and and things. Uh, but uh, I hope that hopefully that answers uh, your question. Oh, okay. The second part. I think you answered it all in one. Um, I'll take the next, uh, the last two questions, okay? It's, is the parameter for the PP buildup in the Wang model affected by composition of the sand, especially fine cont uh, contents? And how does this, uh, how is this done in UBC sand? Uh, currently, I, I, of course, uh, if you, you have fine content, like uh, too high, I mean, this probably, doesn't behave extremely like just pure sand. Uh, for those mod the models actually ha have to do some like a sort of uh, approximation. Uh, the model are not that good to differentiate how much fine you have. So when you have fines, I mean, when you, you got your NMN60 below count, probably you have to modify, of course, that's the modified clean sand uh, equivalent. So that M160 number for 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 sand with uh, with higher fine content is likely be high than uh, than a cleaner sand. So that number alone is sort of used. We will calibrate how fast the port pressure generation based on the clean sand equivalent M160. So for the ones with the fine con higher content. It's just sort of a, you got higher M160, then your port pressure generation becomes uh, lower. Uh, so it, it's sort of a, uh, that's the way currently, and uh, uh, there is no other detailed way to 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 do further refinement uh, based on just con uh, fine content. Okay. Um, the next question uh, is the input parameters of Wang model and the PM4 sand are quite the same. Did you compare them before? Yeah, yeah. Uh, because the, the one model is the one actually used in the real project. Uh, we didn't use the PM for uh, the GTS uh, result during the project uh, of the problem. Uh, this comparison is done afterwards, like uh, just it's in the stage when we try to show uh, if we can use GTS and the uh, uh, what it looks like. So uh, the the parameters of the GTS uh, UBC sand 
comes from the the same uh, uh, one model uh, parameter uh, if it's applicable. Otherwise, it's just revised based on uh, that re uh, based on the the concept behind one model. So they, they should be similar. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, yeah, that that that's what I I'm going to say. <laughs> okay. Well, I think uh, I think we'll take uh, that. Uh, well, that's it for the questions. Um, again, Dr. Ma, I want to thank you for the session today. Um, I'm pretty sure everyone was very interested in the topic. And again, we will be sharing the the documentation and the material that he has covered today. For any remaining questions, any of the people who wanted a special uh, material sent over, uh, we'll take those and send it over to Dr. Ma so he can actually take uh, answer those on his own time. Uh, the last portion is actually going to be, um, as a follow-up to today's session, uh, we're going to be doing uh, this type of liquefaction analysis for PAL Foundation using the UBC SAN model. It's an actual uh, a training session. We have about an hour. Uh, next Tuesday uh, for those who want to see exactly how to do this type of modeling and how to do this type of uh, run this type of uh, project with Midas GTS NX. Uh, it's a free session as well. It's going to be next Tuesday um, from 3.30 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. That's Eastern time. Uh, we'll be covering the definition for the advanced parameters as well as differential large uh, settlements, the, the applications for the dy dynamic field, and we're going to go into a little bit more on receiving and taking a look at the outputs. Uh, other than that, I want to thank you all for uh, coming into the session today. Uh, again, if you do have any questions, uh, my email is here on the bottom. You can simply email it to me. I'll uh, stop the presentation at this point so you guys can copy my email. Uh, I want to thank you again. Uh, within the next uh, couple minutes, uh, please check your emails and you will receive uh, the following material. Uh, and I will just ask you to, uh, ask you to return it back. But thank you again uh, and have a great day.